Years Later is a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on The Hitcher. It was released on January 19th, 2007. So, does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa. What? <gasps> Thursday. What year? No. What? Year is it? So I've never heard of this franchise before. Like with every years later, I do research on it beforehand, schedule it. The Hitcher came up. I was like, okay, this sounds interesting. There's three movies. Despite this title being 15 years later of the remake, I'll be going in the order of the release date. I'll be talking about the original in 1986. Very simple premise. You have this boy who's driving, who is very sleepy. So obviously driving at night, being very sleepy. And he decides to pick up a hitchhiker because, you know, that's what you do. Whenever you see a stranger on the side, they wave a hand or whatever. Hell no. I would never do that. I don't care if it's raining. I'm still gonna be like, no, nope, goodbye. I'm not stopping. Because the movies like this, I'm assuming, it wouldn't shock me at all if these cases were actually real. Probably way too many goddamn stories about that. Whenever I saw this, I was like, hell no. Both of their names are Jim and John. Jim's the boy. John is a stranger. And at first, it's normal. There's a certain point where another car passes by and they see that car on the side. And obviously, it was the effect of the stranger. John just kind of touches his thigh to move on and creates this very claustrophobic atmosphere to it. And that works because of the actor. I don't know the actor's name because I didn't look it up but the way he betrays his stranger afterwards stalks him it's very subtle like he's not kind of over the top he's menacing because he's a bit quiet he's a bit kind of i guess by looks he looks scary and just kind of the subtlety that he gives is enough for it to be really creepy off-putting jim obviously kicks him out but then later on he sees him at the back of a car with the family just waving with this goddamn teddy bear completely stalking him now i don't know how he found him this is back in the 80s in the remake it's a bit more believable because they have like cell phones but in this one it's more like it was more convenient like oh yeah you know he just found him this family car doesn't survive because he sees it on the side everyone's gone they're killed and he's afraid and so he goes into like a gas station and this is the one part where it's like okay gary but also ridiculous the way that he drives out of the garage and just crashes out i thought was hilarious i knew he was coming because it was quiet no one was there but again the way that they showed it him crashing out of this garage door dogging him that way i just thought it was hilarious why that way and then there's this other plot there with this girl named nash he meets her at this diner she works at this diner and at first i thought she's there just conveniently to be like with she's like the daughter of the stranger or like an accomplice but no she is really just a girl gets some money working on the side in the middle of nowhere forms a bond with jim by the end she is just sacrificed where jim has to see her get like pulled in half by two ropes in his truck which was an awesome kill cut off screen which sucks but just kind of imagine it in your head also the motive for the stranger is kind of unknown i mean he's doing it for fun but aside from that they don't give no extra motive as to why he's doing it which is good i think it's best to leave it unknown jim comes face to face with them in the diner it's a tense ass scene but it's still evident that jim is still scared while john is just sitting there not phased at all hella confident jim just takes a huge fat l tried confronting him it just didn't work out and john is also smart enough to frame jim as his criminal so you also have the cops on the side trying to capture and arrest jim while also trying to convince them at the same time hey this other guy john Ryder, he's the evil one but of course they don't believe him but they eventually they catch up it is john but at the last moment jim's like you know what i'm ready to kill him and so there's this kind of i feel like unconvenient or just kind of unnecessary pulling him over so that he can go back and kill john himself because he knows like everyone else is watching this movie the cops are gonna be able to get rid of him permanently john gets out and then they have this 1v1 situation shooting each other jim is able to actually kill him shoot him through his torso finally killing him one moment where he gets up but then he's like nope bam shoots him which is good it was a really good moment for jim this whole damn time he was too afraid he was too much of a coward to pull the trigger but now in the final moments he was able to so just kind of conquering his own fears of of having to kill this person but he also did kill a human being so this is gonna create some you know traumatic thing in the future the movie is very simple it's a very simple premise very not very convoluted or complex characters you just have jim who's a normal kid who just wants to go to california probably be an actor and on the way he meets a creepy ass stranger and doing so gets stalked he has to watch his girl die that he just met and kill a human being creates some ptsd some trauma to the head and that's what the movie is about it's very simple so the hitcher 1986 is still pretty damn good and then there was a second movie that came out like i think 2003 2002 something like that and catching up with jim he has a girl now but he has ptsd he needs meds or whatnot obviously who wouldn't be even like 20 years later you would still be kind of messed up after this event my only issue with this movie is that while i like the plot of you know catching up with jim and his girl it's the same thing and you know it's like well what's the point point? and the stranger and the hitchhiker way too hammy way too over the top too goofy to be kind of creepy because he has his kind of like big teeth I 
I think, and like a goofy ass face. It's not menacing or creepy. That's kind of my biggest issue with that. Aside from that, it's typical, you know, they're on a road trip and they go there, meet a stranger. Jim doesn't want to make the same mistake. He does. It's like, okay, this is the same stuff. But now there's planes because I think he's like a pilot or whatever. There's like a plane because the first opening of this movie is a switcheroo. It's Jim trying to play the hitchhiker. And you would think, okay, this is, you know, a cool opening, but they pull a fast one on you. Jim saving this kid from this old man who is kidnapping his kid. It's Jim, his girlfriend, Maggie, and then the hitchhiker or stranger, Jack. The second kind of fake out or just kind of pulling that fast one on you is killing off Jim. Now, this was unexpected because the one thing I will remember about this movie is his death. Killing him off like 40 minutes in, leaving Maggie to be like the final girl. It turns into like a couple kind of like terrorized by this stranger into like a final girl situation. I mean, you can argue that he was like the final boy or final girl in the original. Okay, you know, let's switch it up. Let's have it be Jim's story, catching up with him. He can't take it no more. He is killed off and then make it into like a final girl act in like the last 30 minutes. And I thought that was really cool. I'm not too attached to the Jim characters. Killing them off was like a, oh, okay, this is interesting. Where is this going? So now you just have Maggie versus Jack and then it plays out the way you would expect it. The cops get involved again because they're kind of useless. They don't believe her. Jack is in the backgrounds, in the shadows, just hanging out, laughing, cackling. There's even one moment where she's in a diner. He's cooking it up or trying to be like an employee and then a stranger or not stranger, but a customer comes in being like, what's going on? Having to stop all the tension. There's even a callback to the truck hill where she has him hanged or not hanged, but tied into both sides about to kill him. But then cops arrive because they think she's like a criminal, but eventually she's able to kill him, avenging Jim, but then also surviving for herself. So I do like that. I do like the way that the movie ends with her watching over. There's like a big explosion, there's fire. It goes up and then credits. But again, there's really nothing to evoke like a sequel because it's the same movie. It's just essentially catching up with Jim and then killing him off and then having Maggie be the main final girl. So while I like that, overall this movie's still okay because I don't think it needed to have a movie about it. It was more so, you know, just leave that movie alone. But that's what this movie was. So The Hitcher 2, I think there's a subtitle for it. Hold on, what, what was it? I think it's, oh yeah, I've been waiting. So The Hitcher 2, I've been waiting. Overall, I thought it was all right. And then as of 2022, the final film, the remake from 2007 and the title of this video. We're finally here. This is a remake that's, while it has shot for shot kind of remakes about it, it still holds its own because of the new stuff like phones. And there's also Jim and his girlfriend, Sophia Bush. I only know her from like One Tree Hill. And so because of that, you get thinner dialogue. And so that's why I kind of like this movie. It's not amazing, but it's one of the better remakes. I did chuckle at one point at the very beginning of the movie where the song Move Along is playing because this song was played out seven or eight years old around this time hearing that song on the radio older sisters listening to that shit put this movie in a time frame of like okay this is very 2000s platinum dune also produced this the same studio that did the uh friday 13 and nightmare on elm street my bloody valentine around this time texas chainsaw massacre remake but essentially kind of the same movie the only difference is it is a couple now jim and sophia bush on the road in college trying to go to somewhere i don't know where but on the way they meet a hitchhiker john and this actor's better than the previous one he's not as scary or menacing as the original actor but he definitely has a presence of like he is tall big menacing it works and then the phone thing one thing that john does is like rip the phone in half to prevent these two from calling on the cops stuff like that small little things cell phones are a big thing also they do like a reverse kind of trap thing where instead of the girl being ripped in half it's the guy it's jim and so sophia bush has to be final girl they borrowed that from the second movie and then they borrowed ripping in half of the first one and they actually show it it's more bloody i do appreciate that they do show this kid remember there's like a cg dragonfly shot where it just smacks the window of their car he has to put water in it and like move it away put it on my notes and just kind of put a big circle around it i don't remember why it was just so focused on being like a cgi dragonfly and then just to be smacked by this window i thought that was weird the cops are also back but this movie doesn't have them kind of overbearing the story where in the original and second movie they're kind of treated like idiots kind of like we don't know this genre but you guys you guys are the criminals and this one you have damien dark from the Arrowverse coming in with this cowboy hat being like <laughs> this COVID didn't do it it's one other or a third person so he's a smart ass cop and i do appreciate that it isn't the same round of cops his character being there just be like nah and so since they're borrowing from the second movie of sophia bush being the final girl she confronts john it kind of plays out the same way of her shooting him kind of wakes back up and shoots him again killing him forever and i think there's an explosion is that the second one the first one has like two big explosions which were i'm assuming real there's no way they could have cg that i mean they could have but computers and cg wasn't as advanced back in 80s 
36. I might be mixing up my explosions and which movies, but I don't think there's an explosion. He survives and beats John. And so while this remake is kind of played out the same way as the original, there are minor and big differences to make it a bit more different and have a modern take on it. So in the end, the Hitcher 2007 remake was a good remake. And that was it for the Hitcher series. Fun little series. If I were to rank them, it's easy. It's the second one. Dead last. That one's okay. The remake, which was good. And then the original. Not all bad movies at all. This series reminds me of the Joyride series where they're being stalked by this unknown person. But in Hitcher, you know it's John or Jack. So that's it for me. This has been The Road So Far. And thank you for watching.